Metro 2033 starts like many games, it has a pretty simple intro menu, and has a tutorial mission which takes place a few days into the story of the game, but uh, somewhat generic in nature. Uh, you're climbing up a ladder, you're about to fall, it all feels very typical, and in fact, much of the interesting aspects of Metro 2033 are not obvious. It is, uh, at a surface glance, a distinctly normal first-person shooter game with some fairly normal horror elements, but it's what the subtlety of the environments of the game and the subtle differences between uh, Metro 2033's horror style and that of maybe more classically American horror games and uh, movies, along with some of the uniquely Russian um, elements of the cities and conversations that make the game not only a masterpiece for what it is, uh, and a great representation of a Russian science fiction slash horror uh, sort of um, work as a game, but also uh, uniquely brilliant representation of some of the elements that Russian science fiction has tried to project through books, but done in the game. So the game doesn't start this way, but one of the first scenes of the game, one of the first cutscenes, is of uh, a panorama of pictures uh, on a wall. Uh, and these are clearly old, wrinkled, folded, and they're all of famous landmarks from what is the modern day, uh, or close to it. And this is meant to give this impression that this is a time gone by. Uh, and it's important to Artyom's character that he has these, he collects these, he aspires to this outside world. And he woken up by the father, and the father's friendly, uh, if not a little bit demanding, but uh, you wake up inside of your nice comfortable room, it has a guitar, it has personalized photos, some liquor on the wall, and you exit into a place where everyone's friendly to you, everyone knows you, everyone likes you. And the game is grim here. The conversations are dark, the themes are dark, the lighting is dark. But fundamentally, everyone is nice and friendly to you. And this is an important element, the friendliness of these stations where RTM goes. There are enemy humans, of course, bandits, uh, Nazis, uh, enemy factions in general. But people are friendly in this metro. People are nice, the environment's friendly. Then you're thrust into a scene where things are not so friendly. There's this dark unknown just outside the station. Uh, your father's friend is forced, RTM's father's friend is forced to go into the metro to see what's going on for the safety of the people of the metro. And Artyom is thrust into an uncomfortable situation. He has to go to through dangerous parts of the metro to another city in order to fulfill the last wishes of this brave man who chose to venture into the unknown. And this is sort of this distinct home and safety versus uncomfortable outside world element, right? But this is a complete contrast to Artyom's inner aspiration for this distant time of the outside world, which is no more. Uh, and this is important because in the, uh, in the end of the game, which I did not uh, have the footage of due to time restraints, there are two versions. One of them, if you've acquired enough good karma or done enough good things, is that uh, Artyom embraces the unknown, the threat of the Dark Ones. He embraces it and looks upon the outside world, which looks like a bleak wasteland, and sees the future, future possibilities. And the alternative, which is the normal or bad result, is that uh, he destroys the Dark Ones. He preserves his home, his comfort, his safety. Uh, and that's an important contrast because that is really the idea of the game is what is this, you know, reaction to this uncomfortable, unknown element? What are these dark ones? What are they? And, you know, are they this, are they the future? Uh, certainly they're the only ones that can live without gas masks outside, so perhaps they are. But the important Russian, it's important to note that this is a somewhat Russian idea, because in many American horror games, movies and games, the horror is mostly shock, shock value. It's a, a hand jumps out at you from out of nowhere, a ghost suddenly appears, and this exists in Metro 2033 of course as well. But the main horror of Metro 2033 comes from the fact that 
in an otherwise sort of mundane situation, there's this uncertainty of what's around you and what's happening, of the realness of it. Like in Envy, the hallucinations, are they real or are they fake? What, what are they meant to signify? Does it really mean anything at all? Uh, and this gradually becomes more clear throughout the game, but it's never really certain until just at the end. And sometimes things do jump out. There is a situation where you have to shoot your gun. But generally, the most significant contrast is not this and the other moments, it's this moment where everyone is friendly and happy. The Metro is a happy, nice, friendly place, really. Everyone in it is friendly to at least to Artyom. Maybe not to Bourbon, his friend, but uh, in general, people are nice. There's vodka, even if it's made from mushrooms. There's food, even if it's a limited supply. It's dirty and small and cramped, but no more so than some urban cities nowadays. Metro is home, and Metro is safe. And ultimately, that's the sort of fight the art on the protagonist has throughout this game. It's between this nice comfort and this outside wasteland that represents what he saw in his photographs. It's the outside world, it's something bigger than him, it's not the tiny cramped metro, but it's bleak and desolate and unfriendly. Um, and so it's these two elements of comfort and safety and uncomfortable and unknown that make up most of this game. It's this constant co combat between safety and danger that makes the horror so strong, it makes Artyom's inner sort of dialogue so strong, and it makes the game.